Hello, our dear viewers. Uh, my name is Abraham Chaturikura, here again, your moderator for the Speak Out Show. Today, we are going to be talking about depression, which is one of those things that is affecting Ugandans, Africa, and the world at large. It's been misunderstood in some places. It has been called witchcraft, and it has been called quite a number of things. But uh, here today, we have uh, our speaker, who's going to talk to us about depression, who's going to tell us what she understands concerning depression and is going to take us for a much deeper rooted conversation in that regards to depression. So I uh, introduce to you our speaker, Madame Biranji Prima Elizabeth, who's going to be speaking to us about depression. And my first question was, what exactly is depression? Because in Uganda today, or in Africa today, especially among us as a youth, not many people actually know that they are undergoing depression. Not many people actually know that what exactly depression is. They have named it quite a number of things. But from you, we would want to understand what exactly is depression. Thank you so much, Abraham, for having me. Um, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here to share my experience. And I first want to let um, our listeners know that feelings of sadness, grief are very normal things that we go through as human beings. All those feelings when you lose somebody, so we shouldn't be quick to name a certain feeling as depression. However, how you know that it's depression is a bit of time. You could lose a parent, for example, and mourn for like a week or two. But when it goes into a month, those prolonged feelings of sadness if they go on for a couple of weeks, more than, for example, two weeks, and you still don't find motivation to do things you used to do, you, you want to withdraw from people. So I, I just want to let us understand that, for example, first of all, it is normal to be sad. No one should feel um, like they are not normal because they are sad. However, depression, when it is depression, it happens for a certain period of time. And even when you want to pick yourself out of that place, you cannot pick yourself. So briefly, that's what depression is. So there's feelings of sadness. So you're saying that we shouldn't really be quick to, to call these feelings of sadness and grief depression unless they have lasted for a particular period of time. So for Ugandan, for, let me speak to the Ugandan perspective for now. We are in a place and a time where so many youth are being considered to have mental problems. In fact, there was a recent study that has been released saying about 14 million Ugandans are actually having mental health issues, depression being one of those issues. And especially, it's especially with the youth. So what exactly is causing this depression in us as people? What exactly is causing this depression, especially in school going students? What exactly is causing depression in um, and maybe it's the people of uh, the, the ages of 10, let's say, all the way to 30 years and 40 years? Yes, please. First of all, um, our society, even as Africa, not just as Uganda, <clears throat> We are not very descriptive. We do not like to name things the way they are. Yes, you wouldn't, or our parents, because I think they're in a different generation, they wouldn't want to name someone who, is, who has withdrawn, for example, they are ever quiet and sad. They wouldn't name that as depression. They would, they would instead name that as a child who is in talk to people. So the reasons why we don't even acknowledge we have it is because our society has refused to name certain situations. They are correct names. But also to look into, for example, school-going children, again, it goes back to our society. Um, for example, since we, our education system, first of all, everyone says it has a problem, but even mentally, really, it does. It's something we took up, um, we refuse to refine. So students come from a very young age with a certain kind of pressure to excel in school. And when you don't excel in school, when you don't get A's, when you don't get 90s, you're not a good child to your parents. You have failed to make them happy. And so we grow up as students um, feeling that we, for example, if you're really weak in class or weak in sciences, which I don't think is a bad thing because we are wired differently, but because our society has chosen to put that as a measure of success, then people go into withdraw and these feelings of sadness because they think they've not been able to um, live up to what their parents expect. But also something I think we don't talk about a lot and I am very vocal about is gender-based violence. And not just gender-based violence, but um, 
a domestic violence at home. So what what we have most, I think you see videos moving around of mothers that are beating their children, yes? Throwing them on the floor and all that kind of violence. Guess what? Some of that violence is transferred violence from a dad or from a mother who grew up in a tough situation. So they transfer this violence onto the child. And these kinds of children either also grow up violent or they go through depression since their childhood. Lastly, I want I just want to understand that I want us to understand that it's situations around us and because of how we are wired that is making us grow up like this. And sometimes you don't even notice. For example, look at um, children that have to work with their parents to get their school fees straight from a, a young age, you'll find um, a, a child hawking gin nuts, yes, you ch- you find a child hustling the way a, an old person would for their own living. Guess what? It has an impact on their mental health. So these are some of the things that we don't notice. Our society has repeatedly refused to name the situation what it is called. And as long as we don't do that, we are going to keep suffering and we still won't be naming it. And so we won't get help. So- so I believe from what I have heard you say is that it's how we are looking at depression or rather the symptoms of depression, the signs and the, its effects is that we are naming it something different. So I'm believing that our challenge maybe could be is that we don't know how to identify depression. And on top of not knowing how to identify the effects, the symptoms, and even the causes, maybe we don't know how to deal with it as well. So my next question would be, how would we deal with this kind of depression? How do we help these children that are depressed? And for those that aren't, how do we help them not get to that place where their home temporaries are? Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I don't think we have like a one bullet answer to you know solve every one of those other challenges that we have. But I think, of course, one of the very major things we can do is to recognize, recognize that depression is not um, a disease of, 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 you know, the white people. Um, I remember the first, the first time I went through it and I tried to explain to somebody, they told me that it's for rich people and it's for white kids, like Africans don't go through this. So it made me sit back and keep quiet for a certain period of time without speaking out about it until it it affected my academics and all those things, right? So the first thing we need to do is to recognize. And recognition comes from awareness. And when we are doing awareness, another problem with this country is why in the world would you go to, you know, a village and you're giving out flyers in English, you know? About anything, by the way, like about sanitation, about sanitary pads, why are you giving out flyers in English? So I think there there needs to be um, a sort of revision in how we do um, how we do awareness about things. I think it is important. Maybe if some people, if some people can read, then let's write those messages in their languages or get people in their languages to speak to them. I've worked in a refugee camp before and those are, we went with flyers that had English on them. And guess what? We couldn't help people because they couldn't understand the information that we were giving to them. And it was really about mental health. So what I'm saying is that we need to raise awareness. People need to understand, even the lady that sells, you know, tomatoes on the roadside, she needs to understand that if she continuously keeps bringing her child to, you know, to exposing them to this situation, I'm not saying it's bad to work, but they should be careful how they speak to their children, how they, what things they say to their children, how do they speak into the lives of their children. These are all very important things and they come from awareness. Awareness could go as you know, as low as just the LCs, the primary schools that um, students go to, even these U- US, US, USE schools, government schools, we need to do awareness in a way that people understand, in a way that people relate. That is why Americans or people who do um, shows for children, they'll create cartoons because children relate with those. They wouldn't like bring a, you know, a movie that has all these graphics and stuff. They'll bring a cartoon because that is what a child understands. So, we need to take that route as well. Explain to people what this is in ways that they relate to and understand. Thank you, that was really detailed. So when it comes down to awareness, I believe it is also very important that people do understand the effects and the symptoms. Well, on top of knowing what causes depression, for a person to identify that they are actually depressed or to probably identify that another person is actually being depressed or going through depression 
what effects and symptoms should we look out for? What effects and symptoms should we be looking out for? Yes. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so first of all, I, you see, more, like most of the illnesses have, you know, symptoms that you can really see and tell. The difference with depression or things that have to do with mental health is really you can't always look at somebody and know, yeah? For example, even when I will share from my experience when I was going through it, I didn't even know until a time that I, 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 I just noticed that I had lost a lot of weight. I was doing things differently. So really, even if we know, um, even if we know the effect, most times it is upon us to identify that effect unless you have someone who really like just studied you and they know when you're going through changes. Yes. But here, um, some of the you know effects of depression are that... Like I said, sadness is a normal thing. And when you feel sad, you might not feel motivated. But if you're constantly, if you constantly feel unmotivated, you feel like waking up in the morning is a is a hard job, then you know there is something. You know, there is something. Sometimes you start to doubt yourself. You start to to doubt why you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing. If you're already working, maybe you're, I don't know, a lawyer or a doctor, you start asking yourself whether you're doing the right thing. Yes. And then sometimes you just, um, you know, sometimes these things move like two way. You could have depression and anxiety at the same time. So sometimes it really needs like an experienced person to tell you what exactly that you're going through. But you just notice that sometimes you lose a lot of weight or you'll find solace in food. You, you'll find something, not really food, but you, you will want to run away every time. You will want to run away and like, I said, when you feel this for a certain, like if, if you feel it once, it's okay, it's normal. But if you feel it for like a prolonged period of time, every time you think about your life and organizing it, you automatically, your mind wants to run away, then you know that something is wrong. If your mind wants, for example, run away to alcohol, run away to food, some people will either gain a lot of weight or lose this weight, then withdraw or people will just withdraw. They wouldn't, they don't want to go out. They do not want to talk to people. And I I hope we don't mistake this for um, people that are naturally introverted. But if you're not introverted and then you start to feel that you, you, you really don't want to be around people, then it's time to check. I also want to caution when we talk about the effects um, or signs, symptoms, because I, I feel that signs and symptoms really are the effects because when you have a sign, you know, of, of um, when you have a sign, for example, of withdrawal, it's really the effect you wouldn't want to go even to class, yes? But I want to caution as well, we look at the signs and symptoms and effects as well, that self-diagnosis is not a good thing. Friends, I request that when you start to feel abnormal, Please look out. I, there are some. Uh, there are some free. I know there are some free um, people, counseling services and things like that, that wouldn't charge you a lot. You don't always have to go to Butabika. And sometimes, really, people think Butabika is like the big. Like, you are totally mad when you go there. So you could look for something you relate with. There are personal um, psychiatrists, but self-diagnosis is not the way to go because sometimes you diagnose yourself that you have depression. And then because you're speaking it into your life, it starts to manifest and yet it wasn't really depression. Or sometimes you'll go and buy medicine, you know, for antidepressants and yet you're not depressed and self-medication is not the way to go. Now, just for two more questions, just before we can come to the close of our conversation. So you have talked about the symptoms, you've talked about the signs and how that once you begin to see some of these things rather than self-medicating which many africans unfortunately are doing we should go see a psychiatrist for a professional diagnosis which is a very important thing but um there are so many people that are combating our depression in so many different ways some people are trying movies cartoons maybe people have different ways to help them out of this particular different forms of depression but for those that might not be able to access the psychiatrists, for those that might not be able to access the professionals, what healthy ways, what healthy methods would you suggest they use to combat depression? Thank you so much. Um, again, I'm going to share from my personal experience because I said the first time I opened up and, and talked to someone and told them, I actually talked to a relative and their psychiatrist and I asked for help. 
they didn't pay attention. So I, I made research and I read a lot. Um, so these are some of the things that I did and they worked for me. Meditation is one of those things. I know meditation also sounds like a thing that is out of this world, but for once in a while to just stop and and just focus on the good or think about something, giving yourself time. And here's a here's an easy way to do it. Um, you can just lie on your bed, look at the roof. Yeah. You, you don't always have to sit the way we see it in movies. Someone is sitting cross-legged and all those things. You can do it your way, really, and try to repeat something that makes, you know, that makes um, makes you feel better about yourself. For example, you could try saying, I am thriving. Not I am thriving, I am thriving, but in a very calm way and breathe at that. that that's the next thing I want to, to, to recommend, breathing. Breathing, um, being aware of your breath while you do it. You could do just 15 breaths and in them, you are saying something about yourself. I am thriving. It just goes up and there are actually videos on YouTube, music that can help you um, do this breathing. But breathing is actually so good and underrated. People don't know. Um, for example, even you're just, if you're just nervous about an interview, an exam, you could do simple breathing. You breathe like very slowly in and out, in and out. That really worked for me. The other thing um, I recommend is, I don't know if people know about adult coloring. And I don't, I think sometimes many people might not be able to access material about adult coloring, but adult coloring is basically, you're, you're not coloring like things for children, yeah? There are special pages that are drawn for adults to color. So you get colors like, I don't know, I'm, I'm just making a, an advert, but they're the ones that have seen really do good things for me are Nataraj. Colors that really, you know, are bright and you color and just focus on coloring when you're doing it. You don't, um, you try to shut out the world and just focus on this coloring. Because one of the things depression takes away from you is your concentration. You'll find that you're trying to do something and then after 10 minutes, your mind goes back to your problems. So with, with adult coloring and depression, it helps you to keep doing one thing for at least like 30 minutes. It helps you to build back um, adult coloring, especially to build back your creativity, but also to like just help you stay focused while doing one thing. Another thing is to take breaks. Even if you're not depressed, take breaks. Um, to, to just know that we are not in control of this life, that you could do good and it was still, it, sometimes people will not see it, that you're not in control, like you, you don't have control of the outcome of things. For example, that maybe if you work so hard, you'll be promoted. I'm not saying don't work hard, but don't think that because you're doing it, a boss will not be unfair to not promote you or or because you've campaigned so hard, you didn't go through for a certain, like you, because you think if you campaign so hard, you go through for a certain post when, like we should leave that place in our brains to understand that we don't control our lives. We only can do what we can do. So taking simple breaks, taking simple breaks really could, could mean small, small things. Like if you do a routine, you know, a routine kind of life, one day break routine and just, I don't know, break routine, do something, cook for yourself, do something for yourself that takes you off your normal routine. Really, there is a lot that I have to share about this, like um, that you, you sometimes you'll find that you don't need to actually go to a hospital if you follow some of these things, yeah? But really reading a lot helps you. It helps you um, regain yourself. It helps, it helps you discover um, your triggers, for example, if if the depression, because sometimes it comes from a disease, yeah. If it's a disease, then you would know that I don't I don't want to go on the internet and I'm seeing things about diseases, things that make me panic, things that take me back to my situation. It also goes back to that knowing what your triggers are. If it's a relationship that got you into that depression, don't be looking around for things on the internet or or IG or you know things that are going to make you go back into that place. So knowing your trigger is also an important thing. What caused the depression? Why do you feel like that? Then avoid material that takes you back to that same place. So there is really a lot, but most of it is self-preservation. Just know what gets to you and don't let it get to you. Stop. Like 
stop, do things a little bit slower than you are doing them. When you recognize you might be going through something, um, to just say, no, I won't do this today. I am not a slave to my life. I can be free. Just allowing yourself to not be bound. And lastly, please do not say I am depressed. You simply have depression you have anxiety, you have, but you are not the disease itself. Even the way we speak about our mental health is very, very important. Uh, from what I can gather from your conversation that you are, what you are saying is that as we combat depression, mindset is very important. Uh, your motivation is very important and your methodology is very important. By mindset, you're saying we shouldn't conform and allow ourselves to be defeated mentally by the disease, to not identify with it as though you are one with the, with the disease. You can have the effects, the feelings, the symptoms, but you do, you do not become the disease from what I can gather. And from what you have also said, it is very important that people seek out the expert uh, methodologies in how to combat and help themselves. And while these methodologies, like you said, can vary from one person to another, as one person might be able to be helped by A, and another person could be helped by Z or Z. So it is very important for the mindset, the motivation, and the methodology, that, that drive that keeps people going to not give up, to keep their minds and their brains in check in whatever they're doing as they are trying to help themselves to healthily combat themselves out of that feeling and state of depression. So now, um, Madam Berenji, for our last question is what I would ask is, what words would you like to leave with our listeners? What words would you like to tell them? What would you love them to remember? Thank you so much um, for having me, first of all. I would want our listeners to know that they are not weird. They are not cursed. Um, they are not, you know, they are not outcasts just because they have something going on with you know with their mental health simply just because you you don't feel motivated to do that day you're somewhere in the middle of your course and you're asking yourself whether you're doing the right thing you're in a place and you're just freaked out by just being in that place i want them to know that they're not weird and that they can heal and that they are not that disease they simply have that disease and it, it doesn't mean that they are going to be um, they are going to be there forever. One of the things that helped me personally is I signed up to a certain newsletter um, that helped me really to go through the emotions. I tried to be because one of the things that you know how to get yourself out of this thing is discipline, your personal discipline and a personal decision to, to say that. I am tired. I am not going to be living my life like this. You see, when you have a, like a disease, like how can I say? You have malaria, or you have there are things that our friends can help us with. But when when I was going through this, one of the things a friend of mine told me was, "I can be here all day and hold your hand, but I can't pick you up. I can't pick you up. I don't have the power to." So I want them to know that nobody can pick them up from where they are. They've got to pick themselves up. They've got to remotivate themselves. And when you decide to do something, do it, do it with discipline. And lastly, do small things every day. Here is what happens when you when you when you're trying to heal from depression. Today you you know you get the newsletter or you take the tab, you take the tablet, you'll be energized and you're going out and you're like, yes, I've healed. Tomorrow you wake up and you feel worse than you felt yesterday. So it really healing is not a straight line is what I want our listeners to know. You'll fall, do anything, crawl, roll yourself on the ground. Like whatever happens, don't stop doing something every day. Depression can go as bad as feeling you know, feeling disgusted by having to lay your bed, things like that. But just make a promise to yourself, first of all, and just be like, I will lay my bed every day. Now, whatever happens, be disciplined to lay your bed every day. Do it for yourself every single day. So I want them to know that when you start taking tablets or seeing a psychiatrist, it doesn't go away in two weeks. It is a journey that I promise when you get out of, you're going to have built a better you if you're consistent and you're disciplined. So that's the last thing I want to say. Don't 
stop. Take your tablets. If you can't afford them and maybe you've read about something that can help you, do it consistently. You might not do it fully every day, but don't stop doing it. If you've just decided to write down your feelings, journaling is one of those very good things. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Birunji. Uh, it has been a very good pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, we are hoping to have you another day, another time when we shall agree. But thank you very much for today. Thank you for what you have talked about. And I believe our listeners have been changed, transformed, and as well as blessed. Have a good evening. Too. Thank you. Have a lovely evening too.